Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to the com video, we're going to be analysing whether NVIDIA's RTX 20 series of graphics cards is limited by memory bandwidth. As of the time I'm recording this, rumours are swirling that NVIDIA are planning a Turing refresh by launching the current series of RTX cards, but with faster memory clock speeds, raising from 14 GBPS the cards launched with last year up to 16 GBPS this year. So the question is then, will this actually impact performance, assuming the rest of the card specifications, namely clock speed and core count, remain consistent with what we currently have? Obviously there is a possibility, now that the yields are getting better with Turing, NVIDIA could increase the clock frequencies of, let's say, the RTX 2080. But let's assume they don't for this video. Let's assume that they keep all of the other specifications of the cards identical, but just simply raise memory clocks. Would that net them any performance increase? Well, in the case of the RTX 2070 and 2080, both cards are using 256-bit memory bursts with 14 GBPS memory. This means that both GPUs have a memory bandwidth for 448 gigabytes per second. Increasing this to 16 GBPS means that they would have 512 gigabytes per second of memory uh, bandwidth available to them, which would be quite, quite the increase. So how are we going to test this? Well, we're going to be using two different GPUs. We're going to use the RTX 2070 along with an MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti. And what we'll do is we'll lower the clock speed, so we'll have a negative 700 megahertz for the RTX 2070 and a negative 800 megahertz for the RTX 2080 Ti. We'll also run it at stock and we'll also run the cards with the same frequencies but positive. So 700 megahertz for the 2070, 800 megahertz positive for the RTX 2080 Ti and that way we can see just how much of a difference, if there is any, we have in the results. MSI's Gaming X Trio RTX 2080 Ti actually ships with a boost frequency of 1755 megahertz, which is significantly higher than the boost frequency of the Founders Edition model, which ships at just 1635 megahertz. But we did want to test just what impact we would have by raising the core frequency alone and leaving the memory clocks at stock. So that's just what we did. We increased the power limit to 110% while adding 106 megahertz to the core clock. We'll also be using a Ryzen 7 2700X for the RTX 2070 and for the RTX 2080 Ti, which was kindly loaned to us by MSI, which is a Gaming X Trio variant. We'll be using an i7 8700K on their Gaming Pro Carbon Z390 motherboard and it will be clocked at 5 GHz all cores. The cooling is provided by a deep cool captain 240 pro i'd also like to thank them for sending over the cooler because i'm going to be doing a full review of the uh, deep cool aio i decided to include it in this video anyway because it's nice for testing and yes uh, in case you're going to ask in the comments it is keeping the i7 8700k within acceptable temperatures even at 5 gigahertz or cores so then with that said, let's have a look at some of the results and then come to some conclusions. We'll start things with superposition. The RTX 2080 Ti at stock scores 8,907 points at 1080p extreme. This raises to 9,009 points, so around 100 points advantage when the 800 MHz positive uh, memory clock speed is added. Whereas negative, we drop uh, down to 8,680 points. Similarly, the results can also be felt throughout the 4K, particularly the minus 800 megahertz for the 4K optimized. And unsurprisingly, we also have a similar uh, story for the RTX 2070. So what about other games? Rise of the Tomb Raider at 4K is 85.34 frames a second on the tie, 
which raises to 88 frames per second at 800 megahertz positive clock and drops down to just 80 frames per second with a uh, minus 800 megahertz and obviously the RTX 2070 is also not immune to these effects as well from 55 frames a second at 4K, it raises to almost 60 FPS with 700 megahertz on the RAM. DOS X goes from 55.7 frames a second all the way up to the heights of 58 frames a second. I can't forget Batman Arkham Knight. It's been one of the games that has been in our test suite the longest but it does seem to give a very consistent results for A, and for B, it also seems a very valid benchmark even now. The RTX 2070 at 4K raises from 71 frames a second up to 75 frames a second with faster memory clock frequency, and at 1440p it goes from 125 to 129, not quite so big of a jump, but still noticeable. And the RTX 2080 Ti, raises from 112 frames a second up to 115 FPS. So there you have it though, just by simply cranking up memory clocks, even the RTX 2070 does get a small boost in performance. It's not major, but depending on how much they would be paying additionally for the 16GBBS uh, memory, it may be a nice sacrifice for Nvidia to get a small performance boost. That's assuming they don't increase the uh, clock frequency of the core or increase the number of CUDA cores for the GPUs. I don't think they're going to increase the number of CUDA cores for the RTX 2080 and so on. Most likely they will simply just increase frequency if they were to give a bump in specifications. Because the rumours that Nvidia want to cut the prices of the RTX 20 series, it's possible that they may not decide to ship the 20 series refresh with faster memory because GDDR6 running at 16 GBPS is going to be more expensive than them purchasing the same quantity of memory at just 14 GBPS. So if we look at our tests of just simply raising the clock frequency of the core, there is still some advantage in performance there, but obviously in certain tests and certain games, yes, the title does definitely benefit from faster memory speeds. If you've got a card such as the GTX 1080, it's been relatively easy to resist the urge to jump onto Turing. After all, Turing did launch rather expensive, and it's not like Pascal is suddenly performing poorly. But, if the rumours of a price cut are true and Nvidia knocks at, say, $100, US which is roughly the uh, price that we're hearing Nvidia will be knocking off of their various SKUs, is true, I imagine that that combined with simply higher uh, memory clocks may be enough to tempt people into an upgrade. The biggest problem with our tests, of course, is that we can only add around 800 or 900 megahertz to the GDDR6 memory. We cannot go to the 16 GBPS that these refreshes will supposedly launch at. So how much of an impact 16 GBPS is actually going to make, we just don't know yet. 
but it will be very interesting to benchmark those cards and especially given AMD are going to be launching the RX 57 series in July. Anyway, with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you did, then the normal stuff, like, share, comment and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.